So again, to all of you here and to all of you joining us on our live stream, a very, very, very happy and holy Christmas to you all. Uh, what I like about the crib scene, or what I was just thinking about this morning, is when you look at a crib scene, uh, it's, it's messy. It's full of straw. Even last night we had a little girl who was really, really happy to see our little manger and uh, decided she wanted to play with the sheep and um, gave him such a lovely tight hug. She broke the leg, the ear, and maybe dislocated his shoulder. But either way, a uh, bit of super glue, all shall be well. But when we look at a crib scene, a crib scene is messy, right? There's straw all over the place. You've got animals. Um, back in the day, obviously, shepherds were hardworking men who didn't have regular visits to the shower. Uh, so wouldn't have been the most fragrant, or they would have been quite fragrant, uh, but just not with, of ple with ple pleasant odours. Uh, it's, it's a bit chaotic in there, right? And that's kind of what I like about it, because that's what our families are like. If you think of your, your own family at Christmas, I know we, 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 we like to I idealise Christmas, and, that, and that's fine, you know, a time of uh, good cheer and everyone coming together and that. But uh, I just got two messages this morning from, from people uh, just saying, you know, I just find Christmas really hard. Uh, I'm at home at the moment, and the family are already fighting, and there's already disagreements about this, that, and the other. And uh, this this can be real life, you know. Real life, real life families, real life families are not straightforward. Real life families can be kind of messy. Uh, maybe for yourselves, or for yourselves watching, maybe there's a son or a daughter who's not in touch with you anymore, or there are grand grandkids that you can't visit, or financial strain and pressure, pressures and all this kind of thing. So the reality of, of our messy family lives is what we see in the crib. Okay, it's this, I, one thing that I'm, I'm, is very important to me is that Christmas doesn't become a feast just for kids. That as adults, as parents, uh, as grown-ups, that we look at this, at this scene and it says something to me. All right, the crib shows us that like, even the Holy Family had their rough, uh, very difficult, very unexpected, poverty, rejection, and all of these things. But there's always hope. That's the, hope, that's the, the Christmas message. Right? There's always hope. There's hope because God has a plan. There's hope because God wants to renew each one of us. There's hope because God wants to renew the church. God wants, wants to renew the world. And how does he do this? He, he does this by becoming man. The word was made flesh. Jesus is the word of God and he becomes man and lives among us. Why? So that he can die on a cross and get us to heaven. That's why God becomes man. I was traveling to Austria on one occasion a couple of years ago. I was sitting beside a girl on the flight and uh, she could see that I was a priest, so she asked me where, where I was based and what I was doing. And, uh, and I asked her, what, what, what's she work at? She said, yeah, I'm just working in Dublin at the moment, working for a marketing company. And I just ha had this uh, idea. Uh, I said, look, if, if you had to market the Catholic Church, what would you do? If you had to market the church, what would you do? Right? And she said, oh, that's a good question. She said, she said look, um, when you're marketing anything, uh, you have to find a unique selling point for that product, right? So, for example, Volkswagen, they own Lamborghini, they own Skoda, they own Volkswagen themselves, Audi, uh, Seat, and there may be one or two more in there. They own a whole load of different car brands, but those car brands don't compete with each other, right? Skodas aren't competing with Lamborghinis. Um, you know, if you want to, to, to pull a trailer with a couple of bales, get yourself a Skoda. If you're, if you're a kind of a... Slightly more market farmer, get, get, get yourself a VW. If you're a, a business executive, get yourself an Audi. You know, they're not competing with each other. So each car has its own unique selling point, okay? So if we think of the church, if we think of the church, our church, what's our unique selling point? And when she asked this question, I just thought that is really, really smart. What is our unique selling point? If we don't know what it is that makes our church different, why would anyone attend? Why would anyone be Christian or Catholic as opposed to Muslim or Hindu? Why, why be Catholic? If this isn't clear to us, then there's no doubt like that. Eventually, we'll, we'll stop attending. 
if we don't know what it's all for, if we don't know what it means, if we don't know what's unique and specific to our faith. So what is it? There are a few things. But the one we'll focus on today is that in all of the world religions, God is in some sort of a heavenly place, and he looks down on us here, and maybe he helps us along in some way to try and get to him or some sort of an eternal life. Okay. What's unique, though, to our faith is that God becomes man. So our God knows what it's like to have a family, to have a messy family, to a messy situation, a lot of uncertainty there in the Holy Family. Like, I mean, God will provide, but why are we going to Egypt? Uh, then they hear about all these children being killed up in Bethlehem. I mean, it's, they're awful situations. What's different about our faith, what's very specific about our faith, is that God becomes man. That God becomes man. So then, as, as, a, as, as a man, God knows what it's like to suffer. He knows what it's like to be alone. He knows what it's like to be rejected. He knows what it's like to even experience fear. So our God isn't away off in a throne, some sort of a dis distant place, looking down at us, watching us all kill each other or whatever we're doing. God knows what it's like to be one of us. God knows what it's like to suffer. And other world religions, don't, they don't have that. They don't have that. Our gospel here, in the beginning was the word. The word is always Jesus, by the way. So in the beginning, the word, in the beginning was the word, Jesus. The word was with God. Jesus was with God. The word was God. Jesus is God. He was with God, the Father, in the beginning. And through Jesus, all things came to be. In 1816, a young priest by the name of Joseph Moore in Austria uh, had seen the, the ravages of the Napoleonic Wars throughout Europe, Napoleon and invading and lots of, lots of death, lots of poverty, uh, almost a missing generation of young men who had been killed in the wars. And just after the war, there he is in his Austrian village, Obendorf, if I remember correctly, looking down into this idyllic Christmas Eve, kind of the, the, the Christmas card photos that we see of, of, of Christmas villages in the hills. So snow everywhere, just you could hear a twig break two miles away. And he looks down and he's inspired. Goes home, puts pen to paper and starts writing a song. And in 1818 it was performed for the first time, the song called Stille Nacht, Silent Night. Very, very simple, such a simple, simple melody. Maybe we might sing it today at, at the last song, if that's okay. Uh, such a simple melody, such simple words, such simple chords, it's a very, very straightforward song. And in, to use a modern term, it went viral. It went all over the world. This simple song is translated now into more than 300 languages. I'm sure it exists in Lithuanian as well. And every language that I've ever heard, it exists. We, we have a, kind of a fairly multilingual community. And at Christmas, then we sing all the verses in all the various languages of the people in the chapel. It exists in, even in, in Japanese. Sounds kind of unusual in Japanese, but it exists. Uh, this song, though, speaks about the peace of Christ being born, even though it was just after the messiness and the disaster and the tragedy of wars. And so in the messiness of our lives, we, we do the same thing. We invite Jesus in. Jesus is no stranger to the messiness of your family. Jesus is no stranger to even tragedy, poverty. So as adults, the Christmas story is our story. So we ask the good Lord to bless each one of us today, to bless our families, that in each of our families, we may sleep in heavenly peace knowing that we are loved by God, God who became man, so that man could become God. Amen.